how to domesticate a wild animal, I mean, a typeface. A little bit about me. Uh, I'm a graphic designer and typeface designer, and I've been working in the industry for about 16 years, and I'm based in New York City. But we're going to talk about today about my typeface, uh, and that typeface is Salvaje. Uh, salvaje in Spanish means uh, wild or from the woods. Uh, salvaje is a typeface family that is divided in display and text. Uh, but in for this project, we're just going to be, for this talk, we're just going to focus on the display version. A little bit of context. Uh, so I went to the Netherlands here between 2014 and 2015 to study a master program in typeface design at the Royal Academy of Art in The Hague. Um, this university is better known as KABK. And Basically, uh, the program is divided in two semesters. The first semester, you get to learn a lot about history, Python programming, calligraphy, stone carving. And you do a revival project and also other crafts and events around. Um, but during the second semester, you get to do your final project. For me, that final project was Salvaje, uh, the typeface. Um, in, you know, in every project, uh, you always get excited at the beginning or super excited. And, uh, of course I wanted to bring new ideas. Uh, I wanted to connect also my final project with some personal interests. Uh, I wanted to have or to, to work on something that was at the same time challenging and had tons of meaning. And of course, I wanted to enjoy it, to learn, and I got to decide what I wanted to learn. Uh, and the process is pretty much this, what I'm just going to start to tell you about. So the first thing is just to define uh, which, ty which type of type of typeface I want to, to, to create. So at least at that time in The Hague, uh, in the Netherlands, or I don't know if in the... Uh, typeface design world uh, was like this conception or this believing that uh, good kids design uh, text typefaces uh, because from there you can actually learn tons of things and it's better for you as a typeface designer. And if you go to the other side to explore display typefaces, that's bad, that's not good, you're not going to learn enough. Uh, it's basically was not good or not well perceived, at least in that context. So, but uh, I was in between that, like, uh, should I do a text type, uh, text uh, typeface uh, or should I do like a display one? I was in between those two. Should I do like what I sh I'm supposed to do or what I want to do? Uh, and at the end, I was like, you know what? I'm just going to do both. I'm going to learn from both worlds and I'm not gonna pay attention too much about like what other people have to say. At that time I already uh, had like uh, 12 years of exper experience and it's like uh, I already know what I want. Um, so that was interesting, that was good to define that, but then it was not idea. So I was in the search for new ideas on for, for what what's the, the, the idea of this I face. So those are early sketches that I created. And uh, all of this is influenced by the things that I learned during the first semester. There's a lot of like Python programming, uh, the revival, and even stone carving that influence all those sketches. So those are early sketches. And they were like uh, interesting, but they were just sketches. There was no idea. Um, so, but when I, got to this point that I was uh, drawing those numbers, I was like, oh, there is actually something interesting here. There's something unique, something special. They are kind of extreme, high contrast. They have tons of personality. I like this. So that was good. Uh, and then around the same time, I got to, to 
see those illustrations in a blog that uh, all the time promotes uh, or, or just features different books and uh, they were like the birds of paradise and I was like very 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 excited to see those animals and I don't know they were like so unique so different so um, um, weird but good weird in a way so I started to do tons of research and check the entire book all the illustrations and the origin where they live and it happened that they only live in one part of the world and they have like a totally different evolution compared to other type of birds so i was just very excited but at some point uh in kvk they told me like you know what you should stop your uh, bird research and focus on typeface design so that's what i did but also i was excited and i got back to the numbers that i Drew in the past, and I, uh, I tried to refine those, and I started to put um, those numbers next to the birds, and I somehow just connected those two ideas or those two different universes. But I had the feeling that they were sharing something special, something unique, and that's how I define it: the, the personality of the typeface. So this is something extreme, has tons of character. It's unique and it's dynamic. Uh, one thing that is very interesting about those birds is like they, they have like this impressive transformation, almost like a folding uh, of the feathers in order to transform in something completely different. And I thought that that was like a really unique feature. I never saw that in any other bird, uh, at least that I know. And yeah, that was pretty impressive. But also at the same time, I thought like, well, actually this is interesting because how about a tie face to have like a similar skeleton is pretty much the same bird. But then in some occasions, uh, it's more like normal. In some other occasions, it's more extreme, like tie faces. So it's like one is like for read, like more readable, more um, simple. And the other one is more extreme for headlines. So I thought like, this is the thing, this is the idea, and uh, this is the, the structure of the family. So I got the idea. Then was the process of working, was tons of work, tons of sketching. Uh, again, I started from the numbers, and uh, then I moved into the caps. So this is not the regular way or the normal way that you actually approach to a typeface, but this, is, this was the way of Salvaje. So I was just following that way, but it was so, so difficult, I couldn't find uh, things about the proportions. Uh, it was really tricky to find the, the balance between the lowercase and uppercase, even the shapes. Uh, so I was a little bit lost, and I realized like, after all that excitement of the idea, I was like, well, this is really hard. Uh, there's like tons of problems. It, this is not easy at all. But at the same time, always there are like solutions and those are the solutions that I'm going to share with you today. So the first one was like, I cannot treat this animal or slash typeface the same way that I treat like a Roman typeface. So I had to adjust the proportions uh, in order to have more room and make it more readable and well proportioned in general. The second one, there is more than one solution. So, because this typeface, the, the shapes are a little bit difficult, you have to come up with different solutions for each specific context, but always there are options, new options you have to explore. The third one is, uh, it takes time. This is the first version, from the first version to the last version in four months. Uh, the fourth one is, um, you have to learn from the different breeds you have to learn from the text that the text is going to influence the display and the display is going to influence the text. And as, that's what I did. I was learning all the time from all of them and applying that knowledge to the other ones. And then uh, the final one is just uh, try to test this uh, typeface in a specific context and not out of that context. So it's like printing big and testing how it actually looks in the context that I, I'm intended to 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 do it. Um, 
So results, uh, this was the results uh, the, the result of the, of the family around 2015. Um, between 15 and 18 was a lot of work uh, evolving those shapes, sometimes even redrawing, redrawing everything. And we got to launch uh, the typeface at typographics in 2018, only the display version. So I got together with copper and presses and they uh, are the official distributors of the typeface. They did all the technical part and uh, that was exciting to work with them. And uh, actually you can find the, the website, you can, you can find the, the typeface, you can buy the typeface uh, in, through the website. And those are the specimens that I created around that time, uh, um, just trying to show all kind of like this beauty, elegance, character, uniqueness in different uh, specimens and contexts. And it was very, very exciting just to design and to enjoy just designing and not struggling with the, with the shapes. Uh, so that, that was really good um, playing with color. That was a, Super excited always about color. So then, uh, <clears throat> you know, from the time that we launched the typeface, uh, a, a lot of people been using the typeface um, in books, publications, uh, records, products, uh, posters. I don't know, like so, so many things. Uh, all the time, people send me like, "Ah, oh, look at your typeface," or. I see it on fancy news and different places. And it's just always really exciting to see that what people are doing with the typeface and how they actually own the typeface and they create something unique that I didn't even imagine. So it's exciting. So what's going to happen with the future of this typeface? I don't know yet. Um, it, I need to work on the text version, but I don't know exactly when that's going to be. And that's it, uh, lots of learnings. And finally, I just want to share a little bit about those learnings. So from this project, at least the display uh, side of this. Uh, so the first one is like embrace chaos. Sometimes you don't know the parts and you, uh, you don't know which part goes with which other part. It's, it's just confusing, but it's good. It's good. You need to, it's, it's good in order to find new solutions. It's a good challenge. Uh, fears, we all fear different things, uh, but it's good to face them and go to them and get some knowledge out of it. Uh, imagination, always imagination is really good. It's important go to where no other people go and uh, I celebrate that a lot. This is a practice of passion. Uh, passion always is important. Uh, it takes a lot of your time, a lot of your, uh, uh, a lot of things from you, but uh, it 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 there's like a it worked. Uh, this is an endless pro uh, process, and at some point you have you have to to stop and decide this is a good version I can publish. Uh, in my case, it was like three four years or something, or even even more. I don't know. And still, there is work to do. So. And finally, be yourself, be real, be unique, be you. Uh, that's the best uh, thing that I can, can get from this. Uh, not many people are going to like you for who you are or what the things that, that you do, but I'm sure if you do it with passion, with imagination, and you, know, you have like a solid uh, foundation, uh, you can go... Um, uh, you can get uh, to to create beautiful and amazing solutions and to solve even problems. So that's it. Finally, I just want to share this quote from uh, Charles Bukowski uh, that I actually is really connected with my life and the way that I see life and design. And it's this, if you are going to try, go all the way. Otherwise, don't even start. Um, that's it. That's my presentation. Thank you so much.